This is the place to go for anime, manga, comics, video games, all pop culture information. This is the place that you need to be. This program is brought to you by Black and Studios Entertainment Division. Remember, it's Black and This is Haley Cummings, and when I want to listen to something funny and down-to-earth, I tune into the hardest-working podcast out there. My favorite and Oklahoma's favorite podcast, The Elijah Bailey Show. Thanks for downloading The Elijah Bailey Show from iTunes or BlackStudios.com. And here's a word from some of the folks that make it possible for you to hear this show for free every Thursday. Hey everybody, Elijah 5000 here, the Buckety and myself. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. But we wanted to make sure that you know where to go to get amazing original pop culture t-shirts. Go to our sponsors at riftapparel.com and at checkout, use promo code Elijah Bailey Show to save 10% on whatever your purchase is. It could be clothing, it could be backpacks, it could be posters, it could be a figurine that they have. Whatever it is, you get the lowest price. So again, promo code Elijah Bailey Show at checkout and save 10%. Oh yeah, baby. We here. Okay, we there here. we go. Three. We here. Two. We here. One. We here. How come? Are you here? Yes. Ah, oh, there you go. I am hey. here. I am here woo, with woo, the weather. Woo, woo. Black. black. Black on black on black. Like, what's a um, CB4 is the first one that did it. Who? CB4 with Chris Rock. On what? I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. I'm bliggity black to black, black, y'all. The bliggity black, black, black to black, black, black. It's a parody movie. It's kind of oh. like Chris Walk's version of I'm going to get you, sucker. Based on a kid that wanted to be a rapper. Took the name of a uh, common street criminal thug in his area, even though he wasn't that uh, notorious thug. And, um, yeah, went to jail and became a famous rapper. And Did he get shot? I mean... It's CP4. Mm. It's up block four. You never know. You're not famous. Yeah. Unless you get shot. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Do you see how bright we look? I'm here. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it's it good. It does look don't. damn good. Yeah, yeah. Look at yeah. that. Uh, look at this, folks. Because We're we quit, here. It's because we quit wearing white shirts. That's right. Anything white then turns out the light, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm Elijah 5000. I am the underscore bucket D playing yeah, turn, my mouth. Yeah, just, he just wanted to hear himself talk. Yes. But we're here. Myself talk. But we're here. You know what? I was thinking it this. Feels good. It does feel good to be here. I was thinking, I was like, man, I need to bring my laptop back. It looks more professional than looking. Thank you for following. Uh, but it looks more professional to look on a computer than it does your phone. Like researching the notes. But, I think we should go with old school paper. Oh yeah, you said that last time. Yeah. Why have we not done this yet? I'm uh, lazy. I keep forgetting. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. even brought fucking printer, uh, ink and everything. It's like I, I bought that <laughs> printer on the way up here and put it in there, and yeah. then we're still on the phones. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we know there's a printer in there, right? <laughs> uh, I think I saw it. Yeah, probably ink in that bitch. I think this is exactly what I did. I went in there. I was like, printer. I was like, I need to print shit. Out of my mind. That's exactly but what I, I did. You. Unless unless we get the cool phone stands, I was eyeing. Okay, while we're while we're doing the intro and shit, I'm gonna pull up the phone stands because I had some. And someone looked kind of cool, didn't they? Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. "Oh, you know what? That's gonna take too long." Let me because I had like ten of them that I wanted just for my setup at the house, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh yeah, put this bitch right here. Ooh, I can hang my headsets right here, even while oh, I'm not getting nasty. Oh, real nasty." And Jessica's like, "You really need that right now?" I was like. Wah, wah. Wah. Yeah, we're gonna wait on it. It's not that important, but for the show, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's it's, it's it, what we need. Yeah. Um, but today is the 211th episode of the Elijah Bailey Show, and today, as with most days we record, there is a theme. The very first week of the week, the very first episode of the week or of the month of the month is going to be comics. Second week is anime. Third week is video game. Fourth week is our Bailey Bugle. And if there's a fifth week, that is a uh, mixed bag. Mixed bag. Uh, mixed bag of goodies. Bag of goodies for you guys. But bag of goodies. We know today is comic books. Hey, is that Snapchat? We or? are Snappy Snap. Hey, Snappy Say hey Snap. To the Snap Hi. Hey, hey. And I'm hello. going to go and throw this on the Black End Gaming Network Thank you. Instagram page, too. Because the music, we got like 48 seconds left. We're going to ride this in. Yes. All the way in. Oh, feel the music. Let's turn it up feel just a bit. Feel the burn. Uh, uh, 
Uh, boot. Okay, so comics, as you know, we have a couple of segments. We do our comic book releases where we cover Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and Image. Then we have our Straight Outta Comics, which is primarily comics to film news. So we talk about films that are coming out, some of the things that we're excited about, or uh, like we did with Sonic, we broke it down like, how do we feel about this film? Do we think if they would have let the previous version go? We would, you know, we, we mix it up, we combo, and then we end every show with our anime and manga of the month. And and it is March. Uh, it is a brand new month. So we have brand new anime and manga of the month for you. So, so yeah. this is kind of uh, comic book related because that's what this episode is about. Um, man, I'm caught up on um, the goodness gracious of what they call Dragon Ball Super. Yes. Dude, I enjoyed those episodes. Someone at work was like, eh, those episodes are all right. I mean, they weren't like, you know, Vegeta and Goku aren't. Yeah, going in on it, but they were good. We saw the okay. saw the Z fighters throw down a little bit, you know. It really, it honestly, it, it felt like I was rewatching uh, the tournament of power. power yeah, yeah. With everybody. like you see, sells or not sell, but Trunks' new sword deal. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay, so they released something where it's a new version of the spirit sword because you know he took the spirit bomb and did the sword. In, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah heroes. Yeah, yeah. So he's got something else new. It came out like maybe two days ago. I haven't seen it. it must wow. be it must be going to pop Top up secret, in the next top episode. Secret. But uh, but yeah, it's good. And like Goku just popped up. Yeah, like so. <laughs> at the very end, he he gut checked somebody, a female, because that's that's what Goku would do. Yeah, gut checked the female, told her to sit down. Hey, you know what happens when he does it? Master Roshi almost got beat. Yeah, Nom, yeah. Nom got beat. He got he was Nom, fighting for his whole country yeah, yeah. Chaosu, for some water. Chaosu held it down. Yeah. Uh, Yancha got to hold it down. Then he mm-hmm. got you know he got swept up. Um, Goku and Piccolo, I gave them mad props. They, mm. they their strategy is what it should have been during the power, which makes oh, no that makes me sense. See, that makes me so I mad, dude. That I can't see the because you can't see behind. Yeah, you want to just uh, yeah, switch screens, just, move it over. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy though. I was uh, rereading. Um, Manga lately, and we're going to kind of briefly bring manga into the comics episode because it is the Japanese uh, version of, I mean, they're still comics, they're just called manga because the the chapters are a little bit different than mm-hmm. what we have here in the West, and so I was going back through them old because I went to uh, Vintage Stock again, Okay, okay. and uh, you, know, you, you know what I've been saying, like, if I don't get it then, it's going to be gone next time I come here. Yeah, so, that's, a, that's a very scary theory to live by. It is, <laughs> especially when it's more your nostalgia. Yeah, I so can I only like, imagine. I was like, ah, uh, and I was like, okay, hey, give me, give me a price that we're not going to go over today. Because I was like, I'm like hardcore. I could just come in here. She's like seventy five, and I was like, you can get a lot for seventy five vintage stock. Yeah, but they had the Rama one half. The rest of that collection, uh-huh. I bought from chapter. The one you were talking about last week or the week? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have like when I got it last week, I had uh, two. I think I only had two. That's the only volume that I had. And I was like, I'll just buy these progressive levels. Like, nah, I get them now. So I got three through 21. So oh. almost the complete uh, saga of Ranma. Did that hit you at the 75 mark? Oh, this is 102. <laughs> it, was, it was over. <laughs> but we also had that. I was like, <sighs> and then on the back end, I got some shit that I never seen before. It's almost like a mix between monster and, and monster energy oh you're talking about monster like art, uh, art yeah. style okay the monster. old school and then like the not really grainy it's not not grainy, not grainy. it's it's, it's a realistic it's a realistic realistic and an older caricature version of people yeah but this good. version also kind of like watermarks too so think of if you mix uh you're you're running and death stranding in the rain and so you have the water on, so everything that you're looking at is kind of distorted like you would normally in rain. Because people with glasses, as soon as water starts coming down, everything gets distorted. But it yeah, has yeah like we're a, like, no! Yeah, my world is gone! My world is gone! <laughs> <laughs> but it's got like this nice texture. And the crazy thing is, the good guy is like the villain. So I immediately start thinking of Helsing and Gungrave and stuff like that. And they're trying to save humanity from... like It's basically like... Uh, or survival manga that I haven't read before. So I got that and some other ones, but I'm finishing Ranma before I move on to those. Nice. Dude, I, I, and that got me back into the old chapters of Dragon Ball because I was like, I can't buy the next one because what book does my Dragon Ball series stop on? Because I get the collection where it's three volumes in one. Mm-hmm. Same thing, where did I stop off at Dragon Ball Z? And I was like, every time I say, I'm going to go home and take a picture. So when I come back to Vintage Stock, I know what I need in the next chapter. So I ended up just rereading them again. I was like, well, I know where I am in the story. I'll know exactly where to go because I'm probably going to 
going to go this week. Mm. So that's what I've been uh, collecting. But uh, let's get into the news. Do you mind starting us off with the comic book releases from Marvel uh, Comics? Sir? Are, is it uh, we in video mode? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Yes, there it is. And, and we first, have uh, the Strategy Academy. Academy. There you are. I had to try Issue to find one. that picture. Issue one. Uh, you, what the hell, dude? Really? What? <laughs> Do you see who wrote this? Yeah. Mr. Mister Mister Young wrote this. And uh, Hudeberg. Yeah, just get the last names, dude. <laughs> Design and cover by Ramos. Uh... Variant covered by J. J. Scott Campbell. Uh, But anyway, let's go and get to synopsis. That's what I would have done. The Sorcerer's School of Marvel. (laughs) The Sorcerer's School for the Marvel Universe. No, no, just skip over. You just said fuck the rest of the people and put their time and work into this. Well, a lot of them was repeated. I was about to say Ramos uh, Ramos again and Young again. And then uh, Jerome. I got to give a shout to Jerome. Okay. Open up. Open now, not just Jerome. Well, he okay, Jerome. He don't like his last name, okay. man, so, because he, gotcha. he understands. Jerome and how? But this is the <laughs> Sorcerer School for the Marvel Universe. Yes. The Marvel Universe has mysteriously changed in a, such an alarming way that Doctor Strange has done what he avoided for decades. He opens a school for young sorcerers. Young people from around the world with aptitudes in the magic have been brought together in New Orleans to study the mystic arts under Strange, Brother Voodoo, the Ancient One, the Scarlet Witch, Malik, is it Malik? Mm Mm-hmm. Malik, Hellstorm, and all your favorite Marvel uh, magicians. I was about to say musicians. That's all right. They down there they, in New Orleans playing hey, the jazz, hey, hey. baby. Bam, bam, they got the jazz fingers. Uh, but with all the new magical threats, is it too late? So this is coming to hit you here soon. 40 pages, rated T, four ninety nine. Nice. Uh, the next one, we have Outlaw, issue number one. Uh, uh, written by Eve uh, Ewing, Ewing uh, Kim <laughs> Jetanito. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go disclosure. I didn't even really read the name. I was like, ah, it's going to be whatever name it is. Exploding from the pages of incoming. <laughs> Top of DB, yeah? <laughs> In the wake of line from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the chorus. Exactly. <laughs> in the wake of a devastating tragedy, the United States passes a law that will make <laughs> that will shake the Marvel universe to the core. Uh, that's funny. This is a lot of shit is happening in the Marvel universe. Yeah, right as now. it always yeah. does. And, the, and no one figures out why. Anyways, the world has been enough <laughs> of teen has had enough to, of teen heroes. The crackdown has begun, and the lives of the Marvel's next generations will never be the same again mm. uh launch into a new era this game changing event one shot that was sent shockwaves across the marvel universe you won't want to miss it this is a 40 pager uh <laughs> coming to you rated right t 499 that's enough to go in the bathroom take a shit and put this back on the shelf until next christmas yep 40 pager let's move on over to dc comics we have metal men making their entrance back into dc again issue number six written by dan didio Art by Shane Davis. After Platinum finds out that she is based on a real... easy ones. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that on purpose. No, I Not didn't. Just I, didn't. <laughs> I will from now on. Yeah, clearly. Uh, Platinum finds out she is based on a real woman Magnus used to know in college. She sneaks away to search for her human counterpart and learns the twisted reason for why she loved Magnus so much. Meanwhile, Magnus! Uh, son of a bitch. Meanwhile, back at Magnus Mountain, Inth Metal Man seems to have some bigger plans of his own with something and someone else from the dark multiverse on sale March 18th this year. <laughs> I had a notice. He gave you the dates. I know. That's what I was laughing at. I was like, I mean, the dates. Three ninety nine, a six of 12, 32 pages. And the reason I thought this one was interesting is because. Who is that? The Metal Men. Mm-hmm. Metal Men is basically like the Scooby Doo gang of the of the DC. They were all made out of different kind of metals, and those metals they were organic enough to where they can meld and shape. So it's almost like uh, the construction cons, from, um, but just with people. I see what you're talking about. And now, uh, Nth Metal Men, there was this whole big deal. Like you can kill the dark versions of yourself from the dark universe with Nth Metal. Because of the whole Batman metal and the dark universe. So this is tying into that. So now we're taking hmm. comic characters that weren't really prevalent in today's modern era and repurpose them and put them into what's going on now. So I'm sure we're going to see the Batman that laughs and some other things go on here with the dark universe and nth metal. But hmm. uh, next we have 
Uh, the Low Low Woods, issue number four. The low Low. Written by Cameron Maria Macado and Low art by Ryan. Danny. L and Octavia's path converge in an unexpected and bizarre way. They come together again just in time to witness a truly horrendous sight. A mob of skinless men erupting from the fiery fissures mm. of Shudder to, <laughs> Shudder to the Think, Pennsylvania. Ooh, that's scary. It is just a little, almost like, Attack on Titan. Uh, man, are they are they yelling? Uh, I think it sounds like, like it hurt. I mean, think about, let's, let's let's revisit. Okay, that one more time. Okay, uh, they yeah. come together again just in time to witness a truly horrendous sight. A mob, a mob. of skinless so men. That's, yeah. that's, that's, so that's a, a group. It's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Skinless men. So you don't know what they are. You don't know black, white, Mexican, whatever. They're just, They're just things. Scan. Yeah. Erupting from a fiery fissure. There's a hell. There's like a, a a fracture in the street. Yeah. And these guys are just walking out of it. I mean, they have no skin. And uh, of Shudder to Think, Pennsylvania doesn't even really have a real name. Oh man, so you Shutter know you're think, that, That's a scary point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> March 18th. Where are you going this weekend? Oh, Shudder, Shudder to Think. think. Oh, I why are you going there for? Oh no, god damn. I was going on a witch hunt. Hell yeah, things are not going the way that you want them to. Mm-hmm. $3.99 issue four. This is the four out of six that are coming to you, 32 pages. So let's move on over to... <laughs> Dark Horse. The thought Dark you, Horse. thought you would have did like... Sorry, I was trying to... Is this this is the Frankenstein one? Yeah, the hand. The hand tree thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Frankenstein. There we go. Uh, <laughs> issue number... Frankenstein Undone. Issue number three out of five. Uh, this is written by Mike and Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben. Uh, that's See, right. You have, at the beginning, we did last names only. And this time, I'm like, you know what? Let's names. give them the first, first name. Names. Nice. I go by my first name. That is true. I go by my first name. So, like eh, there you go. Uh, since we're on Facebook Live, most of you guys go by your first name. Anyway, synopsis is pursuing his humanity <laughs> in the unlikely company of Arctic Adventures. The monster, Frankenstein, un- unwittingly becomes the pawn of ancient of an ancient cult. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, and unbeknownst to him, he's been recognized as Victor Frankenstein, created by a p- <laughs> powerful local man uh, whose influence might see him arrested or worse. Man, I don't know. It depends on what. Well, yeah. this is March 25th. 32 pages, 399. Depending on the world. Yeah. And most of the time you think of Frankenstein, the world is different. Yeah. It's oh, scary. Yeah. yeah. There's more white people. Yeah. And I it's think being a rest isn't that bad. No, it's not. Yeah, it's like playing Monopoly and at the end of the game, you know, when everybody has all the yeah. properties, you want to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, we head on over to Image Comics. I feel like we should have like a like a jo- oh, like, a pose? like a JoJo pose. Yeah. Image. Oh. Uh, <sighs> Okay, um, you put me on the spot. I know. I wasn't ready. What, okay. Now, I'll, I'll come, I'm going to come back with my image spot when we go to break. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so I hit mine. All right, here we go. And then you'll that hit yours. Good, that Thank you. That it's, it's mostly the, the beard. Uh, but we have Decorum, issue number one, written by Jonathan Hickman and art by Mike Huddleston. There are some assassins in the known universe. Uh, this is a story of the most well-mannered one. Manners are a sensitive awareness of the feelings of others. If you have that awareness, you have good manners, no matter what knife you use. March 11th, $4.99. From Image Comics. And that wraps up the first segment of the show where we give you the comic book releases. So with that, we'll take our first. Oh, I forgot to mention this. I didn't even mention this to you. I did this in secret. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show, I have not only give you all the releases for each one of these uh, publishers, but I've given you a breaking down uh, or a breakdown of the comics from those publishers besides these that we brought to you that I really want to read and why. Uh, I'm, I, I don't even know. I think DC comics has the most comics out of the publishers this month that I want to read because they're not, they're, they're doing a little bit more of the horror, uh, suspense genre. Okay. And the way that they're doing it is very, very interesting. I think, uh, there's one called the dollhouse where, uh, there's yeah, there's That's a lot. Not, of, I'm listening. Hey, I'm listening. Okay, okay. Tell me about yeah, this yeah. dollhouse. So when we go to the dollhouse, there are uh, it's like a little bit of a mystery going on here. So, uh, what's that movie? Clue. 
right? Okay. You go in, somebody dies, everybody's trying to figure it out. They're trying to blame someone else. Well, the dollhouse is supernatural forces and trying to figure out what's going on and why this is tied. This curse is kind of tied to my family. Okay. Why are there things here? Now, uh, let me see. Image had had a couple. Image had On the Stump, which that artwork is beautiful. Most of their comics were more racially diverse showing very very different distinct things this one the protector like the oh, artwork it's just nice. crazy and then scroll up and there's another one on there uh, but they just have all these different kinds of mm. artworks and design these stories are very rich so image That's comics i think so you know it's real oh yeah. yeah yeah and it reminded me of batman black panther and then also a little bit of iron man because he's he's got everything capable to be this hero but now time has passed he's older and his son is trying to stop him from being a hero, but he has, uh, I think, some form of dementia where he can't really put things together. So he's trying to figure out why he's not the hero that he used to be, even though he still has that calling. And someone in his family is trying to stop him because for his own safety. So that's a whole comic. It's not even really about what he's doing. It's about what he's struggling trying to continue yeah, yeah, to do and struggling with. So uh, go to patreon.com. I give you write-ups on how I feel about those. There's also videos, blogs, everything else, uh, personalized and private streams. You get the show commercial free uh, as well as all other versions of the show there. Um, and then there's something uh, special for the giveaways that we also put up on our patreon.com. So it's patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show. And with that, let's take our first pause for the cause. And we'll be right back with segment two of episode 211 of The Elijah Bailey Show. Hey, this is Jamie Limberg, host of Upbeat Urbanism, a podcast where we seek to have an open dialogue about what it takes to create healthy, intentional, sustainable communities, one conversation at a time. Each episode is an interview with a city planner, leader, developer, real estate professional, or community builder. To listen, search for Upbeat Urbanism wherever you find podcasts, Follow us on Twitter at UUrbanism and on Facebook at Upbeat Urbanism. Devote yourself to your community around you and devote yourself to creating something that gives you purpose and meaning. Until then, keep it upbeat. Hey folks, this is Elijah 5000 and Monica Robinson, and we're your host of A Little Bit of Anime. Your number one stopping spot for all the latest anime's news and reviews. If you want to join in all the fun and anime goodness, then make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts and Podbean. And please join us every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. And remember, please brighten your day with, with a, a little, little bit, bit of anime. anime. Hey everybody, this is Reverend Shaw. I'm Delisa. And I'm like father. Like daughter. And we just gonna hang out with you. We just gonna kind of talk about father-daughter relationships, the good, the bad, the ugly, when we like each other, when we don't like each other, and I hope Delisa don't clam up on me. Because that could be possible. <laughs> we just want you to check us out, man. I promise you, you won't be disappointed, you won't be let down, and we'll leave you with something that you can chew on and make your life that much better. Find Like Father, Like Daughter on Apple Podcasts, Podbeam, Spotify, or BlackOfStudios.com. New shows drop every Saturday. Uh, image pose. Mm. What's your pose at? Uh, man, I, should, yeah, <laughs> I guess that exactly. threw me off. Ah, oh, dude. Um, have you even watched Pose yet? N- pose? Yeah, the one <laughs> where I told you he said there's a room full of hoes thirsting. On Jojo Bizarre? No, no. This was the the show where it was the like uh, primarily like a, almost a full cast. I think like ninety percent transvestite transsexuals. That were I'm talking about the '90s scene where they were doing the pose and the drag uh, shows and and all that stuff. We mm. talked about like a few episodes ago, and he said, "Look at all these thirsty, ho- unquenchable tho- hoes, or some shit like that." He's talking about they came to a funeral. That's my JoJo bizarre. That's it. Okay, I'll do that. That's a good pose. Thank you. Thanks. That was very late. It's a good pose. No <laughs> I know and you love it. <laughs> you love it. You love it. You love okay. it. Okay. Uh, let's do that. I'll take the first two, and you take the last two. Gotcha. Topics we have on news from straight out of comics. So first off, 
Spider-Man 2099 and Scarlet Spider movies rumored to be in the works. So Phil Lord and Chris Miller have been put in charge of expanding the franchise, officially titled Sony's Universe of Marvel Characters. What? I know. And, and doing the TV stuff as well. Um, now, recently we had these two vehicles on the slates to be made, which are Spider-Man 2099 and Scarlet Spider. So Lords of uh, Longbox, who'd been uh, dropping a lot of interest in uh, interesting info across the board late, claims that the infamous The Clone Saga comic book arc is being adapted into a live action, which will lead uh, to the creation of Ben Riley, a.k.a. Scarlet Spider, hmm. Peter Parker's clone who originally believed himself to be the one and only Spider-Man, which... She's if you, a clone? Yeah. Uh, and it's, this is the one that's wearing like the, uh, the solid blue and the, the blue hoodie and the red... Um, uh, I don't want to say sp- spandex underneath. Okay, and it's like solid on the leg, solid hairy. Wears like tennis shoes. He's got the blue hoodie on. He's d- completely different. Got blonde hair. Whenever he doesn't have his uh, mask on. Hmm. Uh, different storyline. As we get closer to it, we'll break down okay. the difference between this and 2099. And then as for Spider Man 2099, Sony has apparently commissioned concept art for the live. Oh, excuse me. For the last, for the live, for the live action film about Miguel O'Hara's future set web slinger, apparently this could either happen very soon or in the distant future. Uh, if you recall, Miguel recently made his cinematic debut in the post credit scene from Spider Verse uh, with Oscar Isaac providing his voice, and um, so we're looking at two very distinct but two very well received spider Man. The Ben Riley Spider Man was very well received in the nineties cartoon, which is on the Disney Plus uh, app if you're watching that. And then Miguel O'Hara had his own Spider Man twenty ninety nine cartoon, which took uh in account his backstory and how he got to the future and him becoming the next Spider Man and the Spider Man of that timeline. And that was kind of like more of like an anamorph uh deal because the the citizens of the world were uh, animals that stood on two legs. They held positions in court and everything. They were all different kind of animals, but they were like full fledged. So um, that scene, I actually made a clip of it on twitch.tv four slash Elijah underscore five thousand. And when Dragon Ball Kakarot, when I talked to those two that got took the drug and turned to beast men, yes, that's what they look like. They're like bears wearing like t shirts, oh, okay, and, or tigers wearing t shirts, or and uh, one of them looks like Judge Dredd. They kind of took that concept for twenty ninety nine. Judge Dredd. With Sylvester Stallone, where he had like the armor on and had like the visor, and it's just like his little his cockeyed mouth hanging out, dude. Uh, think of RoboCop, but like like that mm. and darker. And he's got X's <laughs> like red X's on and uh, gold. Yeah, okay. I think that just threw me off. I, that more. just like killed it. Yeah, right. That, that, when, whenever you go into your news, I'll find the pictures for you. Okay. Um, I actually do have video of this one. Go ahead and pull this up. I got a video and a picture. F. Gary Gary's M.A.S.K. Mask movie enlist Bad Boys for Life writer Chris Brimmer and then Snake Eyes rap. So G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra uh, was released 2009. G.I. Joe Retaliation was re- uh, released in 2013. So seven years have passed since those films first came out and people still want Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes is one of the original members of the G.I. Joe and key characters of the G.I. Joe the franchise. Homies. Oh yeah. It's the homies right Wearing now. all black, uh, black, never talking. He is the, he is a uh, Westerner that was taken in by the Arashi Kage uh, ninja clan and trained in martial arts. Uh, we've heard this story before, Iron Fist. Uh, he now serves as a ninja commando and martial arts uh, trainer of G.I. Joe. Uh, and so while Snake Eyes has just finished wrapping, that'll be the third movie in that series franchise, it seems that Paramount is starting to look ahead for the next toy-to-movie adaptation for F. Gary Gary's upcoming mass film. Um, and they just found their writer, Chris Brimmer. So if you guys have seen Bad Boys for Life, phenomenal, very, very excellent movie. Um but MASS, which stands for Mobile Arm Strike Commando, was originally launched in 1985 as both a toy line and an animated series and followed an elite strike force that fought against the evil organization known as Venom, a.k.a. Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem. So those we should be getting snake eyes, I think, around holidays like November this year. Hmm. If uh, memory serves well, and then this mask will be another one that we enjoy. We enjoyed Transformers for a while. Now it's time to go to some other. I want to stretch. How do you think this is going to go? It's a it's a war movie, but it's based off toys. So I think it's going to be a holiday release. I don't think it's going to do too well. Mm -hmm. I don't think you think it's because it's too much. It's too much character content. Yeah, to just throw in at. I think GI Joe hit nostalgia real well, but mask is like. eh. Yeah, oh, 
I I don't rem- I have my old GI Joes, like the original GI Joes, and then I have GI Joe GI Joes. I don't have mass toys. Mm-hmm. I have uh, the Swamp Thing. I have Toxic Avenger. I have uh, even uh, Mr. T when he had the cartoon with Hulk Hogan. But a uh, mask, nah, not on my list. They make it, huh? Nah. Ooh. No, no, no. What's next on well, the list? Star Wars, J.J. Ever reportedly wanted to debut Palpatine in The Force Awakens with cloning backstory. So when I saw this as well. Um, That's just Dredd. Ah, the homie. But she didn't know. Him, no, because so. he was Margo and the Judge Dredd, all of them getting mad like, man, he said he watched me, but, <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's slipping. He's acting brand new. <laughs> but with Star Wars fans' first trailer for the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, they were shocked to learn that Emperor Palpatine returned as he was seemingly, seemingly killed in the events of the Star Wars Return of the... Oh, okay, okay. I think I have seen that costume before. Yeah, Ben Riley. Yeah, okay. I know you're talking about Oh, you say he got on tennis shoes? Yeah, he did. Yeah, but, like gotcha. Yeah. Um, he, uh, Palpatine was killed during the events of Star Wars Return of the Jedi, but visual effects supervisor Roger Geit confirms that director J.J. had previously wanted to bring the character back he from Star but Wars. The, the Force Awakenings, while also offering more important, more information on how cloning techniques led to his return. In the finished film, they are teased that they, it was a cloning technology that brought the character back. And with the most recent comments being the most concrete information yet about the character's return. Uh, yeah, so I had to wait that long to see that ugly ass again. Pretty much. I don't want to read yeah. this because this kind of spoils it if you don't yeah. want to spoil it. But anyways, uh, I did read about this and it was interesting because, you know... The way they made it seem like is that his, in which his, he was strong in the force, uh, Palpatine. Yeah. He was like one of the strongest people in the force, period. So if I'm correct, the way they seem like they made it into where his his force spirit would still be able to dwell inside this clone that we saw in the, yeah. the Return of the Skywalker, or the last of the, whatever that movie was called. What was it? Last nice. of the Skywalker? Yeah. Rise of the Skywalker. Rise. There we go. But it was the last of them, so. It definitely was. It was. Mm-hmm. And bring us on home with this. And I don't even think this is sad news. Dude. This is just like the next step in human evolution. Hmm. Cloning? No, the next bit of news. I mean, Disney Palpatine is CEO. Never. Bob Iger. Yeah, Bob. Oh, Bobby Boy reveals why he <laughs> stepped down uh, with the official statement. With the successful launch of Disney's direct-to-consumer businesses and the integration of 21st Century Fox well underway, <laughs> Stuff that I've done. Yeah. This, I'm in my Bob yeah, voice. Right Bob there. voice, yeah. Um, I believe this is the uh, the, op, the optical, the optimal time to transition to a new CEO. No, but anyways, no, I have I, I have the utmost confidence in Bob. I feel and like look yes. forward to looking clo- to working closely with him over the next twenty two <laughs> months as he assumes the role of uh, assumes a role and dives deeper into Disney's. Uh, multifaceted global business and operations while I continue to focus on the company's creative endeavors. Hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes you got to get out when they're getting, getting good. Like he didn't, he's I mean, made I mean, so I'm not, much I'm money. Not, I'm not saying he hasn't done yeah. correct moves, but he might have. Maybe some, that's the uh, reason why I'm looking at him. Like, <laughs> like well, why would you do that? Because I'm not making those type of moves. Yeah, Cause um, the motherfuckers like, you know what? I was like wearing expensive shoes and my son's like, dude, we're, these are cool. Where are these shoes? Like, so I just bought like a shit ton of them. Like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can just take that, take a bag of your money and go to an island and just lay on it. Yeah. But so. I, I feel like he's got like some bigger things at play. Something that's like, because that's a huge company. Yeah, I think you're stressful. right. Something that probably, I mean, if he's talking about that he's going to continue to focus on the company's creative endeavors, then. What if he stepped down to be like a tra- uh, an acquisition? Uh, Accusations uh, transitioner for fo- the between the merger yeah, yeah. and then slides into something else. That does else. happen a lot. I mean, that happens in most companies. Or whenever the merger starting to really go down, because you got CEO steps almost down two years. You got twenty two months yeah. left, so there's a lot of stuff. So that is it for the news today. Again, Bob Iger steps down, and he clarified that for you. If anybody was worried out there, uh, we heard about Pat. Tapatines, yeah, little Play-Doh man getting remade. Tapatine, uh, we, we <laughs> mask is on its way, and uh, Snake Eyes raps, and then last but not least, Spider-Man 2099 and the 
Clone Wars. That's mm-hmm. what it should be called. I think it was actually called that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah see what I did there? Yeah. yeah, the clone arc for Spider-Man, uh, Scarlet Spider is coming to us. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Jump right in. Break. This is the first month of the new anime and manga of the month of March 2020. And we got a video for it, too. What are you doing, baby? You doing? Bam, there you go. Um, anime of the month. No game, no mm. life. Such uh, a sweet. It's not turned on, is it? No, it shouldn't be. All right, cool. Uh, no game, no life. This anime was a Netflix anime that I. That's when I got introduced. That's when to you. It. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it, it came is, out 2017 yeah. originally. Siblings Sora and Shiro together make up the most feared team of pro gamers in the world. Mm. The blank. When a manage, uh, when they managed to beat a god himself in the <laughs> game of chess. They didn't realize that that guy was about to show up to their fucking door and bring their asses <laughs> to a whole new world. Where in this world, all the debuts, disputes is settled with playing different games. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Uh, you, see, you see these two brother and sister. They got a super weird relationship. Kind of kind of borderline creepy. But everybody else in the world also sees it as borderline creepy. Yeah. Um, but it works. Uh, they, they, both are, they both move as one. And they're in this world... Uh, slowly taking it all over. Twelve yeah. episodes, not too bad. There's a, there's another. I gotta find this one. I was watching it and I didn't send it to you because I hadn't figured out which direction it was going. But it's basically like you can go into a virtual world, you can gamble, uh, but you have this card, and once you meet your limit, you know you got to pay. Up. Everybody's got to pay, and so it's like leans to the dark side, like real real dark. I, I'll find it and I'll send it to you because it's like, oh, you got the gold card will come right on in. And it's like, once you come in, that door shuts. And it's like, uh, uh, God off of uh full metal alchemist, like just like the blackness. And <laughs> oh then, like, God. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll get you into it. Was, okay. it. was it an anime? It's an anime. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. I had Jessica watch this with me. I was like, wait, so you ain't ready for this one yet. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let's go to berserk first. Okay. Just to get you in the same mindset. Cause when dark shit starts happening, it's not like just one thing. It's like a, a lot of things. Yeah. So. Yeah. That is true. Uh, Manga of the month is Zombie Powder. This is one that I'm going to be talking yeah, about. Uh, no, I do not. Damn it. That's I didn't put one up. But Zombie Powder is uh, a manga that I'm going to be talking about on a little bit of anime. I like, so thought that was... Uh, Grimjaw. Yeah. No, it like, wasn't. I thought, I thought you were I sending know. me like two different versions of no, him. It's the same person. Tight Kudo is the one that created Zombie Powder. Zombie Powder is the first version of Bleach. Bleach, I see. Because it didn't work out. People weren't attracted to it. So he talked to Akira Toriyama, and Akira's like, uh, he stopped writing Zombie Powder, took some of the things that he liked from it, and then rewrote it, came up with Bleach, and went to Akira Toriyama. And Akira's like, whatever your dream is, make that. I and see then, you are determined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you don't kind of the same thing, this. but he oh, just... but this character won't come into play until arc forty five. Like, okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. He looks like his twin brother. But he continue going, going. Go get this. Um, so, Zombie Powder is the first serialized action manga written and illustrated by Tight Kudo Kubo. Zombie Powder was released in nineteen ninety nine by Weekly Shonen Jump with twenty seven chapters, and in the English by Viz Media under the Shonen Jump imprint. Uh, from September 5th, 2006 to June 5th, 2017. So Gama is your main character, uh, is a mysterious figure drifting through a western desert-like town with a giant sword slung over his shoulder and a right arm made completely out of metal uh, spreading up and over his cheek. So that was a cool shit because it comes up Hmm. like right underneath his eye, kind of like Jet Black. Mm Mm-hmm. Or maybe like jawline, and uh, he searches endlessly for the uh, for a mystical set of twelve rings of the dead. Jewelry said to give life to the possessor. These rings are hunted by mercenaries and outlaws alike for a wide variety of reasons. But Ganma seeks to grant What'd himself. What you send me that on? Uh, what I thought you had sent me that picture in text. I don't know. It might, I might have actually posted it like a story or some shit. I feel like I posted. Oh, okay. It. Uh, but Gama seeks to grant himself <laughs> eternal life by possessing all 12. And you find out the reason why I did for want that. to talk about the um, other things that you had did text me about. What other things? Oh, yeah. Let's uh, go ahead and talk about that real Are we going to go and do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's not wait till <laughs> no, next you're fine, week. you're fine. Because I wanted to show you like what people were complaining about. Like, And then somebody okay. made a fan, yeah, I, fan I, I one and did side by watching. side. It was a side by side one. Yeah. And so next week is our anime episode. So we're going to tease you guys with some really cool anime talk. Uh, Seven Daily Sins, uh, season three, yeah, is out, and I guess a lot of people are upset 
Which they always are Far. upset about the budget when it comes to taking the time out and drawing the anime, right? Yeah, and always. Not gonna lie, some of it was, was uh, crazy. Yeah, but <laughs> but because you think you're here, like I know, <laughs> I know y'all got paid. Like I know, no, they didn't get. You know, they didn't get paid. This is Japan, <sighs> man. They had to have gotten some man. money, man. When Bandai makes a video game for you. Multiple video now games. Now that's for the you. deal. Video games get money, but like the the source material, like for yeah, some right, reason, especially in the anime because it's it's hard to. It's, yeah. yeah, but you but can, when you he can sat see up it. in that bed, <laughs> he saw his legs and his, his face was like whoop. And then even old Homer boy's Simpson. eyes was looking. Uh, King Arthur. Yeah, yeah, his eyes, his eyes was all his like eyes. he's looking this way and looking that way at the same time. Like you're about to do some Zoro shit. But see, one thing I don't know. I want. I, I feel different with Seven Deadly Sins though because I do too. At the same time, I mean, even with the money, and maybe it's the, um, I don't, we really don't know, understand this. We're just mm-hmm. kind of giving our thoughts on it. Yeah, speculation. But, you know, they're one of the ones that get to get funded through Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Netflix makes a contract with them. Unlike, you know, there's a lot of animes that don't get that. You just yeah. pray and cross your fingers that they don't find a bootleg version of your stuff. <laughs> and, and they actually pay they for it. it. Yeah. They pay for it on Crunchyroll or some type of yeah. streaming network. But with Netflix, you know, that that's a big Netflix check. Yeah. And the last two seasons. But we haven't seen it yet on Netflix, though. So and, that's what, and that's why I was saying. They might like, do some read. I, I don't know. Could you see them doing that? I would hope so. Could you see them doing that, though? I mean, For, they need to. And they need but, to. and you know what? This is <laughs> what. That stuff, was, that stuff was rough. I feel like I come from this place like, oh, I read the manga, so. Yeah, I kind of I can get through you can get, it. You can muster yourself but, through uh, it, but um, I think some of those, should. I think some, yeah, even though some of those, Meliodas like, didn't have no face at one point in time. <laughs> it was like that one set where Goku was Super Saiyan three and he was throwing a punch. They said, "Was he? How is he looking at anything? He has no face. He has no lips." I gotta see this video. <laughs> Meliodas uh, was looking rough, and Escanor too. They Escanor. had one of his arms jacked up, and one of the other ones little. I said, "Come on now." Escanor looks super rough. Um. I gotta also mm. show you this video, but no, mm-hmm. but that fight was still legit. Oh yeah, oh that fight yeah. was legit, legit. Eskinor had to let someone know, mm. and he just kept hey, hitting. <laughs> he had to let somebody Dude. know. What did he say? He said, "I can babysit for a while." I said, "Oh, he over here talking <laughs> mad shit." Oh, t- said, talking hot mess. But that was a good for, fight. Yeah, it, it was an action action pack fight just it because was, of the two characters. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not, yeah. we don't need to see the. The the, this the, is, the fast arm move. This is this is almost like somebody stepping out of line. The squad's like, "Hey, we gotta get him right because we need him to, to fix this shit up." And so everybody's standing there like, "Escanor, I know he's strong, but 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 his backstory though." You get to the I didn't backstory. Get to, no, 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 okay, no, no, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, I just saw the clip of them fighting. That's it. Because he got he got he got stabbed. Oh yeah, he got yeah. Oh, he got he got stabbed twice, didn't he? Oh, he yeah. got stabbed right in the middle, and he got a kidney stab. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, he the, he the, wasn't the, he was healing up too too good. But yeah, yeah. But then he uh, he <sighs> hulked out. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he when literally. He, you know what he out. reminded me of when he started getting uh, getting hot and spicy. He reminded me of Monterey Jack whenever he cheese and his mustache and shit. Wait, who was from Rescue Rangers? That's right. That's what Escanor looked like because his mustache started growing up. Homie. Oh yeah, because he whoop ass and he loved cheese and he. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah, he did. It was. I was like, ooh, you still the homie? We about to take off. I can't touch you. I can't touch you. I can't touch you. Oh, Meliodas, what you got? Oh, you ain't got nothing on this guy. Meliodas. Yeah. But Meliodas. You know, it, was, it was good. It was good. Meliodas, you need to get a little bit further because Meliodas done come in and he be like, okay, so I know y'all had a daddy at one point in time. I'm your daddy now. Uh, forget whoever you thought was your daddy before. Which episode was that on, you know? Uh, I want to s- I want to say in the teens. Okay, okay. but I'm I'm not sure. I think sure. they're almost done, aren't they? Because I I think I stopped. At, uh, well, I don't know where they're stopping at. They're I think it's like a 22. twenty. They're it's a twenty something right episode, now. maybe like twenty four. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Um, but somewhere in the teens. But yeah, that's all we got for you today for the comic episode. We had to take a. We started with manga, had to dive back into anime, give you just a little taste. But yeah, yeah. we're trying to learn how to talk about the anime we've done for the whole thirty days. Yeah, for the whole month. Because comic wise, like I told you, I've been reading like not. The the manga that I've bought, it's been that was probably like three weeks worth of stuff. And I before that, I was reading uh, the first issue of Shuri, a little Black Panther, and then I was reading the Infinity Gauntlet to Jessica. And that, those are that's all I've been on. But I, I think manga 
has like spurred something with the last like that I, that time I was reincarnated as Yamcha was good. Uh, Death Note, I'm still reading that. That's good. The last two volumes, 73 and 74 of Bleach were really good. So I'm just like, and I, I started Zombie Powder over again too. Mm, zombie Powder. It. Dude. There, so the Zombie Powder, does it feel like Bleach? No. Okay. Zombie Powder. It just got Bleach characters. If I showed you some, yes. If uh-huh. I showed you, it feels like What's Black Cat. Co- Okay. It feels like Trigun, Bleach, and Full Metal Alchemist because one of the death rings, the way that you check is you put it on your skin. Well, out of the ring is like an eye and a mouth and then little hands. So all these hands are grabbing on your skin and they're yeah. basically trying to kill. I think, yeah. yeah, I think at one point in time, if you put the ring on, his whole side turned into a skeleton. So he was just holding it to his skin. He pulled and these arms started just kind of ripping branching off. off and getting longer until he ripped it off and there was, you know, blood from his finger, but these 12 rings of death, they come to collect whatever there. So I guess if you got all 12, it'll grant you immortality or whatever your wish is, but, but I don't know what the price is. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And so they have to have these specific hunters. So uh, I actually send the, the manga to you cuz it's, it's it was good and then it stopped and I was like I'm waiting for this one and then it's like uh, sorry, fans, we're no longer, and it's basically because it wasn't popular enough, and I that's see. when. So the story Shonen, never ended. No, Ouch. no, and I got to figure out what the twelve rings are. And if you want to know, no, that's scary. Stuff. I know. I, I hate. Dude. I hate though. That's like gangster, dude. Hell, who you? Pff, that's exactly like gangster. Yeah. If you want to find out what I'm talking <laughs> hey, about? The, this. Be, be, about to, we dude, watched the whole like thing. Episode six, and the fight was actually popping off. Like everything started really hitting the fan, and, and just pff, white. Nothing can finish that season. No, bankruptcy hits you. But I'm Elijah 5000. I am the underscore buckety Elijah Rickley Fano set. Ooh, you can find the Elijah Bailey Show on the Facebook page where you're probably watching this right now, the Elijah Bailey Show, or Hello. our group, the Elijah Bailey Show slash official group on Facebook. You can also find us on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram at Elijah Bailey Show. Just chop off the W on the end. That's S H O. Then you can send your emails to Elijah Bailey Show at G gmail.com if you don't want to send emails simply subscribe rate and review on apple Podcasts, or add us to your playlist on spotify or simply follow on podbean what about you and black and studios Bucky? Find black and studios on facebook twitter and instagram black and studios you can also email us at podcast at black check out the new website black and it's delicious it is yummy remember um, it's delicious it's, it's dizzy also dizzy also yes but Thank you all for listening <laughs> and watching to Elijah Bailey Show, episode 211, our comic book edition. March Cleanup Edition. Yeah. yeah. That's called a dramatic pause there, son. I just stopped talking, and you sit there, and you love the awkward embrace. I'm going to send you it on Viz, but I'm going to send you, like, the back the, the back door to Ooh. get all of the cause zombie powder on Viz. Ooh, we're going back door. This. Ooh, back door. Mm. Get it. Catch your ass in the next podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Elijah 5000 here. Me and the Buckety appreciate it so much that you download this show each and every week. Again, we drop every Thursday. If you're new to the Elijah Bailey Show, go to Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Spotify, or wherever you listen to this auditorial pleasure that you get weekly, and just subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast.